Before we get started, well, actually, let me shut the fan off or the spray booth first, and then maybe you can hear me a little bit better. It's a little bit better. The topic of our video today is going to be butt seams. We're going to be manipulating butt seams, and it's kind of like a very overlooked thing in the upholstery world. So as we're doing these seats today, we're going to talk a little bit about it and go over some of the different things that we do to make a very subtle change, but that subtle change sometimes makes a huge difference. So follow along. Let's go. Now that the metal is fabricated for the sports frame, I'm going to weld it on and then we are going to get it in primer, bring it over to the other shop and make a fiberglass seat pan for it and then hopefully get them down to test fit it for the final time this week so we can just upholster it and get her on her bike, make her happy. That'd be kind of nice. I'm sure she's dying to ride the bike before the end of the season. I think if you'll notice um, on our videos now, I, I've been saying it on every new video that if you see something you like that we're making, we'll put a link in the description where you could buy it. Uh, we get everybody always asking if they could purchase, you know, seats and stuff from us. We don't sell to the public. Atomic is like a social media brand. It's like kind of just the behind the scenes of what I do um, and our shop does and that type of stuff and most of the stuff i do I, I build for other shops or businesses we design parts for other businesses so if you need to buy them we'll put a link down below and you could actually purchase them through the businesses that sell that stuff um this is actually uh you know atomic really is just here to you know help people see the behind the scenes of what we do and also learn a little bit about it um and hopefully get involved in it um that's why we have like the atomic squad because we want to see what you're doing um so you could show us what you're doing and we could share that as well because we love to see what other people are doing and we do get a lot of people that are like um, in the process of making a motorcycle seat and they thank us because they were looking for information had nowhere to find it and now they're building their own stuff so please when you make your seats or whatever you're doing you know send it in show us what you got we love that you know get an atomic squad shirt take a picture of yourself wearing that while you're working on your project you know kind of uh we love to see that stuff you know that's what we're about so let me weld that up and we'll get it in primer all right so we threw some primer on there and we're gonna let that dry and then sand it down prime it again sand it paint it we still have to fab up the tank bracket and then um once it's dry, we'll bring it over to the other shop and make a fiberglass pan tomorrow. As you can see, the fiberglass pan is made. Well, not made, but it's fiberglass. The bike's all bagged off. We like to really bag them off quite a bit. As you can see, everything gets masked off, gets papered off, back masked, and then put plastic on it. We also got a bunch of bomber seats getting ready. Let's leave that so we could dry and let's talk about the topic of this video, which is butt seams and manipulating butt seams and all the cool things you could do with a butt seam. So let's get started. Sometimes I feel like a two year old when it comes to butt seams. Well, this is probably 20 years ago. I had this customer and he came in and he was just, I, I thought he was joking. He was like torturing me, but he's like, he's like, I want to have a nice tight butt seam. I want my butt seam really, really tight. I don't want a loose butt seam, so make sure you give me a really tight butt seam. Weirdest conversation I ever had, but it always stood in my head as like, what the heck was that about? Talking about seams, there's many seams we do, and you, you know, we've talked about single top stitches and French seams and all the different stuff you could do in, in previous videos, but something that's overlooked is as simple as how you do that seam. So if you were to take, well, let's just make a few of them. So then you can see as we go along and see all the different styles and designs and things you could do with them. One thing I want to say is like a lot of times you'll see like a motorcycle will have a single top stitch and there's reasonings you do certain stitches for certain instances. So like if you were to put a French seam, which would be a double stitch going around here, when you sit on this seat, if it's a seat that you ride a lot, you're going to be wearing on that stitch. So that stitch is going to rub and eventually um, give way. Whereas if you have a single top stitch on a motorcycle, you can see the front of it is actually a nice crisp edge. You see, you get a nice crisp, crisp edge there. And you're sitting on that, but you're not rubbing the stitching. Obviously, this was a, a seat cover that we were making for someone else that has custom stitching on it. So the way I always, you know, say it or see it is if you're building a custom seat with a lot of stitch work on it, it's usually a seat that you're not gonna get a lot of high mileage out of just because it's, it's more opportunities to wear and fail. If it's a bike that you're gonna be touring with or you're doing 10, 12 hours a day and you're putting thousands upon thousands of miles on these bikes, or cars and you're really riding them 
and driving that. The less stitching in your seating area, the better for longevity of it. If you're more about looking cool and having a nice looking seat, then obviously the stitching is really critical in that instances. And sometimes doing top stitches is really cool because it adds a total cool like character and style and flavor to it. Without further ado, we're gonna go over our stitching. And actually, you know, we got some different stuff here too. Like we don't usually use welting on motorcycles or the piping people call it just because it can dig into you. Some of the British bikes and Italian bike will use this welting on here. If it runs down and touches your legs, it will rub your legs a lot. It wears prematurely. We used to do a thing like, a, actually Danny Gray made it kind of famous where he was doing, um, you put a, a welt inside there and then you stitch along the sides of it and it gives it a really cool look. But the problem is if it's underneath your legs, it'll wear prematurely. So we used to repair a lot of those seats. Again, if you're going for cool, it's cool and that's great. And that's pretty much it. So let's get some stitching going. All right, I'm gonna go through and sew a bunch of these together and just do a traditional butt seam. I'm gonna use contrasting stitching. So we're gonna have a black and a tan just so you can see the differences. And if we're gonna go through and just do a regular butt seam like this, sew kind of fast just because we wanna get through this. This isn't about our high-end seat or anything. Perfection here, we're just gonna use these examples for butt seams. So what we have here is just a traditional two pieces of material sewn together. You can see you have the flap here. This is the Savage, right? That's the material Savage. So if you were to, well, I think we're gonna go over to a seat and show you again. Now this is, I'm just using this seat because we had it here. You could do this on car seats, motorcycle seats, whatever. If you were to put the Savage on this angle without doing a top stitch and then you roll it over, your stitch line is facing up. I don't know if you can tell from that, but basically this rolls down a little bit and this is a little bit more pronounced. You're not really gonna wanna do that in a motorcycle seat because it's gonna have your, you usually put your top stitch up here. If you put your top stitch here, it's gonna be rubbing on you and also has this top doesn't look really well. So you would take your Savage and actually fold it under like this. And then this is gonna come down. So now you can see you have a nice crisp edge here. Your top stitch goes up here, so there's nothing rubbing on your pants. So now this will follow, if this was shaped like the seat, this would follow all the way underneath and you'd have a nice edge going right across there. When you do a French seam, you'll actually spread this apart. And a French seam gets a top stitch here and here, which we'll do again. So now if you were to imagine this here, we'll spread these apart. We're gonna put this on this edge here. So what's nice about a French seam is when it folds, you get a nice even look on both sides of that. So you could top stitch here and here. Again, on a custom seat, it won't matter because you will be rubbing on this, but more, um, it's only really gonna affect you if you're riding a lot. So you could do a top stitch here and a top stitch here. When doing that, you'll have your stitch mark, which we'll show you later. We'll have a little bit of material which we trim off on motorcycle seats so it rides right up against the stitch which you have to be very careful about otherwise you can when you pull it tight see i don't know if you can see that there's like a little bump there a little ridge where the material ends and you don't want that so let's go and um sew some of these together okay so we're going to do a french seam here right a traditional french seam and we're going to do half of it backed and half of it unbacked so you can see the difference And again, I'm sewing a little faster because I just want to kind of get through this. If you're doing a seat, you really take your time and you slow, go slow and steady and make sure everything's perfectly straight and crisp. Okay, so now we have a back and unback, see? Let's go over to the seat now. 
I'm gonna use the side of the seat just because this is a flat piece of material. So when you have a French seam like this, you can look and it's just, it's really nice. It's even on both sides. This gap is really, really nice in the center. It comes up to a nice crisp point. If you have a sharp edge, French seams look great because you could actually see that. You could fold it along there. Now the difference with a unbacked, so this is just basically a butt seam. We fold it over and stitch both sides. This is no stronger than a butt seam because everything's relying on that thread. The point of a French seam is when you back it, you can see here, you sew through it. So you got your butt seam, and now you also have these two extra seams there. So it's a lot stronger. Like you pull that, it barely stretches. You pull this and it stretches pretty easily. You'll see this a lot on like airbags on your car. And the reason they'll do that, they'll do a softer thread here because they want the airbag to rip through here. So you get the cool look of a French seam. Um, and the look is what, because of the quality of a French seam, that's what the look became so popular over. So now you'll see that in a lot of the new cars, as well as when you have a contrasting accent stitch, it looks really nice. So they'll put this on the cars, but the airbags made the break through here. So this really isn't that strong. That's why a lot of times you'll have to have your car seat bolsters repaired quite a bit because the thread releases there. You can see with the French seam, it's really nice. And that's that. So let's go to the next one. This here, we're just gonna do a traditional single top stitch. Trim this so it's a little straighter because I kind of rush through this. So a single stop stitch, instead of folding it, spreading it apart, we're just going to fold it over. So we're just going to take this, fold it over, and now we're going to do a top stitch on here. So we want to hold it flat. You want this stitching to look really nice. I'm going to go right across it. See here, it's folded over. You had your butt seam, but this is folded over onto the butt seam. So you could actually see that you have a double stitch here. So it's not as strong as a backed French seam, but it's stronger than an unbacked French seam and stronger than a traditional butt seam. So let's go look at it on a bike. Okay, so as I was saying before, this will probably be a little bit more a better visual. If we were to do this seat and have your top stitch come down along the side here, you can see here, the smooth vinyl is going to come here. You're going to have the pronunciated line on this side of it. Your stitch is also on your seating side, which means if you sit on it, you're going to rub on that here. So on a traditional motorcycle, you're going to see it like this. So basically you'll have, I don't think you kind of see, that's a nice crisp edge. So now you're sitting here, you're not getting a lot of stitching. A sti top stitch like this with a smooth front on a motorcycle seat for touring is great because you're, there's nothing here for you to rub onto. Again, if it was down here, you'd be rubbing on that seam. So this is the traditional stitch you're gonna see. It's just a single top stitch. You'll see this a lot on uh, touring motorcycles and, and, and cars that you drive because it lasts a real long time. So you have your butt seam, your top stitch, and it's very, very strong. So here we're gonna do a single top stitch. We're only gonna do it on one side. So it's almost like a French seam but your top stitch is gonna be on one side and your other side is gonna be blank. And we're gonna do two different ways with this. So now, okay, so you can see here, we have a top stitch, but it's only going on one side and this French seam is not stitched on this side. So basically this is kind of like a French seam unbacked and it has um, the top stitch on one side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim it and show you a different way. So some people will trim this down really far, close to the edge, which was a horrible trim. And then you can snip this off. And let's go see it on the bike, or on a seat. By doing this, it's not a strong st stitch, it's just a cool looking stitch. So you can see here on the unback one, as you pull it, this side is really flat. You have a single top stitch here. And then if you go to the French seam side here, where you actually, it's, we didn't trim it. You can see the difference. See how smooth it is here. And then when you pull this here, it's gonna have a stiffer, more pronounced edge. You'll see this a lot in like an Acura. It's kind of uh, some of the, for some reason, a lot of Acuras use this and it has a nice look in the back or in any of the seats. One thing too is this is unbacked. So if we back this with like a quarter inch sew foam, it would actually have a different look, which we'll go and kind of show you there. Like if you look at here in comparison, these I, I did back these with quarter inch sew foams. So you can see it gives it a totally different look and feel. It's actually a little bit more puffier. I personally like these better this way. 
Um, a lot of people you'll see doing like custom seats now, they'll do like even top stitches like this on unbacked material. It looks cool because it's easier to lay out and, and looks more high end when you're doing that. It's harder to install because they stretch a lot easier. But for some reason, I really like the look when you have a little bit of contrast and depth with the quarter inch sofa foam. They do have an eighth inch sofa foam, but I find it it's almost doesn't even do anything. But anyways, that's the difference there. So now we're gonna go through, I'm gonna show you a different style of stitch, which is totally different. Okay, so this is how sometimes when things are very simple and they look good, it's actually I'm saying more difficult to do to make something simple and elegant and nice looking. You'll see this a lot on a Mercedes. So what you'll do is this is a traditional butt seam, right? It's just a regular butt seam. A lot of times, like I said, you can put the Savage on a certain side to manipulate the way the seat looks and feels and, and the shape of it. But now what you'll want to do, this is kind of like Mercedes does this. And we're just going to do a quick example of a basic, what it would look like. So they're going to do a basic butt seam. And then what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to stitch this material here, which it actually would have been stitched through when we did our top stitch, our original butt seam stitch. You'll put this material on here. All right, so now we have a third piece of material underneath the seat that you don't see. Then you can take and unfold this, and we're going to take and fold this material over like this, nice and tight. Normally you wouldn't use a piece of vinyl on here. You would use a more traditional material like um, like a scrim or something like that. Now we're going to sew this, and this would be sewed right on the edge of the material that you wouldn't see where your next piece of panels would be sewn together. I'm just going to trim this so you kind of get an idea of it. So now when you look at this, it's just a regular butt seam, right? But you could see the instant difference of that. By doing that, this is a very pronounced edge. And let's go put it on the seat and see what it looks like. So this is kind of cool. A lot of people will look at a Mercedes seat and be like, why would they cut corners and do just a butt seam on it? Because a butt seam is so simple, you know? Now, if you look here, like an unbacked butt seam when you pull it, actually we'll do it this way. The unbacked butt seam when you pull it, you have, an op you have a chance of that Savage here flopping over. So if the installer goes to put the seat on and the Savage is here, you can see the pronounced edges on this side and the rounded edges on this side. And on this one, it's always like this. See, it's a very beefy edge. So now by doing this, it's guaranteed. I did this little baggy, but it, you know, when you, pull, when you pull it tight, you'll see you put this on and that edge is always there. So you always have your pronounced edge up here and your weak edge down here. And it's a very nice look. And you can see from where that material goes, it's really nice. And then as soon as it gets down here, it starts to get kind of flippy floppy because the Savage is wherever. So you, it's, it's basically an easier way to install it for installers and keep a consistent look. So something as simple as that, just regular butt seam, just by adding that one piece of material and pulling that tight, will give you a consistent, nice edge. And in leather, this looks really nice. So whenever you see a Mercedes Benz now with a single top or a, a butt seam, you'll appreciate it a little more. You see how nice and crisp that is? And if you were to, again, if you were to take this without the un, with the un back side here, you know, there's, there's a possibility that when you put the seat cover on, instead of having the Savage sit like this, where you'd want it, it could go underneath here. And the second you do that, it's a totally different look. As you can see, something as simple as that butt seam, there's a lot of different stuff that goes into it. One thing I've noticed, like anytime you get involved in anything, if you, you know, someone says they're a mechanic and they want to get involved in it, you can know the basics of doing a mechanical job, but you'll notice that guys who do it for a long time or girls who do it for a long time that are good at what they do, they have a lot of tips, tricks, and um, not even just tricks, but just a lot of knowledge of different subtle things that make the job better, easier, and um, last longer and all that. So, you know, even though a lot of the stuff we do in upholstery side of it, in the upholstery side of it, seems simple, there's a lot more to it. And there's a lot more to like strength and stitching and, you know, all the seams. I mean, you look at one little butt seam and see all the different possibilities of that. And that's just touching on a base of a few of them. I thought they were kind of some of the more popular, cool ones and would be kind of cool to show you. But we'll be going over more and more and more stitching because there's so much more involved in it. Um, and I think in this next video, we're going to be doing the different sew foams, using sew foams and not sew foams. So what we'll do is we're going to do some top stitch and some graphic stitches on unbacked leather 
We're also gonna do the same thing with back leather. So you'll have a, a sew foam on the back of it. And we'll show you some differences in quarter inch sew foams and half inch sew foams and all that. So there's gonna be a lot to learn. So please stay tuned, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Thanks for watching. See you next time.